Once the Bad Batch started immediately in the first episode, a lot of people were kind of surprised at the number of retcons that this TV show started with out of the jump. And at this point, I don't think anybody is safe. Any medium, especially Order 66, especially around Order 66, a lot of these retcons happened at that time. We all know that when Disney acquired Lucasfilm in 2012, they completely made away with the expanded universe now called Star Wars Legends. They made Made their own canon material from that point on, giving some hope to fans that everything would be included in this canon timeline, in this new Disney canon, including books, comics, TV shows, and movies. The sad part about that promise that the canon timeline will always be stable is that now, years later, I don't think we really got that. There's a lot, and I can't go into depth in every single video, but just to give you an example, Clone Wars Season 7, how a Rex and Maul was handled, that was basically completely different from what we got in the novels, in the Ahsoka novel at the very least. So the canon approach has always been, well, this is the temporary solution until we can figure out a new one, and the Bad Batch kind of displayed that more so than anything else. Don't get me wrong, some retcons are easy to understand, they were not fully explained or just mentioned offhand, but there are some that were kind of set in stone, now they are no longer that. So today I thought of an idea to make a video about this specifically. What has this new series, The Bad Batch, has retconned so far? Don't forget we got about 10 episodes left. The first one, and the obvious one, right off the bat, as I said, is how Kane and Jarrus survived Order 66. This was in fact the biggest retcon in The Bad Batch so far. Caleb Doom, the Padawan who survived Order 66, and later on became Kane and Jarrus as we saw in Star Wars Rebels. I remember reading the comics especially, Caleb and his master, Deepa Balaba, were resting at a campfire on the planet Collar with their clone troopers when Palpatine at that moment executed Order 66. This was specifically shown in the Kanan comic series, as you see right here on screen. It is a bit different from what we saw in the first episode of The Bad Batch. In this series, we see kind of a different scene entirely. For them, it still takes place on Collar, but instead it showed both of these Jedi, together with their clone troopers, battling against the Separatist. So first thing to mention is that in the comics, there was no huge battle against the Separatists at that time. Furthermore, this battle was ultimately saved by the Bad Batch, who come in last minute. In the comics, the Bad Batch team aren't involved at all. It is unfortunately during that time when Order 66 is received by the commander, and ultimately we see Hunter concealing Caleb Doom's survival by claiming that he had killed him. We at least have to explain why this choice was made, and I understand, I truly do. The showrunner Dave Filoni had a compelling desire to tell a more different story for this animated show, and he used this opportunity to kind of change the story from the comics to what we see in The Bad Bad. Batch. The story in the comics does not make much of a great episode, but that first episode did just fine. However, as I said, this is one in the long line of changes that we have to contend with, and who knows what else will be changed as time passes. For example, Caller looked completely different in the comics than in The Bad Batch. And there were even smaller details adjusted, like Depa Balaba's lightsaber color. Another small change, if you look at it differently, is that Order 66 affects the personalities of the clones. You see, we've always seen Order 66 as this trigger in the clones' head that basically commands them to kill their own friends, the, their Jedi generals. But we had no idea that post-mortem, this chip will completely change the demeanor of the clones as we see in the aftermath in the first episode the clones completely change in sort of a villainous kind of way in this version, th their entire personalities have been wiped out, and now it's not just in order to kill the Jedi, now the clones have literally become kind of evil with the flick of a switch, no longer caring about loss of life, for example. They are far more aggressive and vindictive. In the series narrative in The Bad Batch, this of course gives them a meaning to the killing. If the Bad Batch could kill these evil clone troopers now, then it wouldn't be so bad. If the Bad Batch could shoot the clones that we still know and love, this would be hard for the audience to accept. Crosser, for example, was doubly tampered with. He was so experimented on that his actions 
aren't basically his fault, and in the series that's how we see him. He no longer has any mind of his own. Now we move on to the third retcon in the Bad Batch series, and that is Saw Gerrera's story after Order 66. So in James Luceno's novel Catalyst, which came out during the time when Rogue One came out in 2016, it suggested that d after the end of the Clone Wars, Saw Gerrera became a very prominent member in the galactic underworld, and it actually took some time for him to finally decide that he was going to fight against the Empire. In Star Wars The Bad Batch, we see that as a completely different thing. So basically, the novel Catalyst is no longer prevalent when we're talking about Saw Gerrera after Order 66. You see, the, Re the beloved Republic warrior has now become a separatist overnight in the eyes of Tarkin. He is viewed as public enemy number one, and he immediately started gathering fighters to fight against the Empire and against Palpatine. Which, again, basically contradicts everything that the novel Catalyst told us about Saul Guerrera. The explanation for this, of course, being that Tarkin has been promoted so quickly into the Empire, and the Bad Batch amplifies that, not only with Tarkin, but with everybody's story. Saul Guerrera's story has been simplified so much that he is, after Order 66, he is immediately closer to his character in Star Wars Rebels and Rogue One. Another retcon is Cutla Quain's story after the Clone Wars. You see, we all know that during the Clone Wars, Cutla Quain left the Republic, settled on the planet Seleucami, and a married son Laquane became father to her children, she and Jack. However, in the Aftermath trilogy, it is revealed that an old cut Laquane was still living on Seleucami shortly after Return of the Jedi. However, according to Star Wars The Bad Batch, in the second episode, he left the, the planet after the Empire was founded, and they were now making Seleucami a stronghold as well as requesting chain codes. If we can give them some leeway here, in the novel Aftermath, Cutla Quain is seen 20 years after Order 66, which kind of means that they can explain this by saying Cutla Quain left in the Bad Batch series, left Seleucami, but by the time we see him after Return of the Jedi in the book Aftermath, by that time Cutla Quain has returned to his planet where he feels at home. We could have that explanation coming, however, it is definitely weird and strange to do all these changes and, and then kind of patch things together. I don't know, it's just weird. Of course, then we have the Moochie problem, Jabba's pet rancor in Return of the Jedi. It seems that Disney has come accustomed to kind of retconning the Aftermath trilogy because the Bad Batch is again ignoring a minor element of that book. In there, the story revealed Jabba's pet rancor in Return of the Jedi had been a male named Patissa, the one that Luke kills. But in episode 5, Clone Force 99 has managed to save a rancor named Moochie. The final scenes in the episode confirm that Moochie was actually sought after by Jabba the Hutt. It is Bib Fortuna who comes in to take her. The implication at the start was that Moochie, in fact, was the, was the Rancor that will be ultimately killed by Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi, but now it's kind of left vague enough that, that you might be forgiven for suggesting that Patissa was Moochie's mate or offspring, especially as there's a long gap between the two. Again, it makes things kind of weird. Why could Moochie just have been Patissa that we see in Return of the Jedi? Now we have a totally different rancor to contend with. My hope and my ultimate wish is basically that we see Moochie in the book of Boba Fett. If in fact Disney has not just retconned Patissa as well, and now Moochie is officially Jabba's rancor that Luke Skywalker kills. I know you may be lost at this moment, but it is too complicated to explain. We still don't know if the Bad Bad just retconned Patissa Rancor that we see in The Return of the Jedi, and now Moochie is officially that Rancor. We still have no idea and no confirmation. So this is by far what we have collected as retcons by the Bad Batch. Did I miss any? Talk to me down below in the comments. Let me know what do you guys think. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up as well. Subscribe for dailies. Now you have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video. And may the Force be with you. Until then.